Hello, and welcome back. In example three, we have a vertical plate that's submerged in water as shown in figure one. It says, use a Riemann sum to approximate the hydrostatic force against one side of the plate. Then find the exact hydrostatic force against one side of the plate. So here we're gonna go through that process of uh, breaking up uh, into thin strips, horizontal strips, figuring out the force that's acting on each strip, and then um, adding them all up to get the Riemann sum that approximates the hydrostatic force on one side of the plate. Then we take the limit as n approaches infinity, which turns it into an integral, and we can finish off that integral. So let's draw a picture first of the situation in figure one on a coordinate system. Now, whenever I see a circle, I like to put the circles at the origin. If we have a choice about where to put the coordinate system, let's put our coordinate system so that the center of the circle is at the origin. I'm gonna draw the picture over to the right, over to the left. Where the center of the circle is gonna be at the origin. It makes it so that when we get the equation for the circle, it's uh, nothing crazy. More convenient, nicer, beautiful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough of that. Uh, now, <clears throat> here the in Figure One it gives them dimensions. So the radius of the the, the diameter of the the circle or of the plate is four, so the radius is two. That's why we went two in each direction. And then from the top of the plate up to the top of the water, that's another two feet. So that would go up to a y value of four then. And I just realized you can't see that. <laughs> Let me move myself over. So there's the two feet uh, from the top of the circle to the top of the water. Let me head back over to block the view. Okay, so uh, the top of the water is at four. That's the water. And we're breaking up our uh, plate into horizontal strips. Again, we're always doing it horizontal because then the horizontal strips have a constant depth. If we broke it into vertical strips, well then, as you cross, as you go up and down that vertical strip, the pressure is changing, uh, the depth is changing, and so the pressure is changing, and that's really hard to, to calculate. So uh, we would break our uh, regions into ver uh, horizontal strips always for these problems, because that horizontal strip represents a constant depth. I'm just going to draw a sample horizontal strip at a given y value. We'll call it y sub i again, with a thickness of delta y. And uh, our goal then is going to be to find the pressure acting on just that strip. So we'll call that p sub i. The units here are again in British units, feet. So we're going to write 62.5 is like our rho g. Let me actually write this again, rho g d. So this is rho g d. Rho, 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 gd. <laughs> that sounds pretty catchy, actually. Just made it up on the fly. <laughs> How uncreative. And we have to multiply, uh, so, so we have to get the depth, d. Uh, that's going to be the, the distance uh, from the strip all the way up to the top of the water. So we can subtract the y values there to get the depth. We have a y value of four on the top, uh, that's where the top of the water is, minus the y value of y sub i, that's where the strip is. So we're gonna have four minus y sub i for our depth. All right, then we have the area of that strip. Now here it's a little bit more complicated than the swimming pool example, because here the, um, length of that strip is changing as you uh, go up and down, right? Uh, near the bottom, it's, it's smaller. Near the, near the middle, it's bigger. And then it gets smaller as you go to the top of the, the circle. 
So what we've got to do is come up with a formula that gives us the length of each of those strips. The width is always delta y, but the length is always going to be is, is going to be changing. So what we can do is figure out uh, a formula for the le right x value and the left x value. Now we know that uh, x squared plus y squared equals 4 is going to be a, describing that whole curve, but we're going to solve that for x. So we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus y squared. The positive x is on the right and the negative x is on the left. So on this side, on the right side, we'll have x equals positive square root of 4 minus y squared. And on the other side, we have x equals negative the square root of 4 minus y squared. So the distance across is going to be the right x value uh, minus the left x value, which is going to be the square root of 4 minus y squared minus negative the four square root of 4 minus y squared, which is 2 the square root of 4 minus y squared. I'm just going to write out that whole calculation. So 4 minus y, and this is y sub i squared, technically, and then minus negative the square root of 4 minus y sub i squared. And delta y is your other dimension for that rectangle. So this is going to be 2 times the square root of 4 minus y sub i squared delta y. Now to find the force uh, acting on that little strip, we're going to take the pressure that we found, the area that we found, and multiply them together. The 2 times the 62.5 will give us 125. Then we have 4 minus y sub i from the pressure, and we have the square root of 4 minus y sub i squared delta y from the area. So there's the Riemann sum that approximates the hydrostatic force. Oh, sorry, that's the, not the Riemann sum. That's just the force acting on just that strip. So the, um, so the force here in total can be approximated by uh, the Riemann sum. Oops. As i goes from 1 to, to n. of the S of F sub i's, which is the sum as i goes from 1 to n of 125 4 minus y, times 4 minus y sub i times the square root of 4 minus y sub i squared delta y. So there's the Riemann sum. So then if you take the limit as uh, n approaches infinity, that's where you get the true force uh, acting on the um, surface. Or the plate. And here I'm just going to jump into the integral. So this is going to turn into the integral uh, from the bottom y value, which is negative 2, to the top y value of 2. Uh, of 125 times 4 minus y times the square root of 4 minus y squared dy. Okay. Now if you evaluate this integral, you'll end up getting something like 3,141.6 pounds. And I'll just say a couple of words about how you evaluate this integral. We're not going to do the whole thing here. But um, what you would do is you would, you one way of doing it is you could take the square root of 4 minus y squared, distribute it to the 4, distribute it to the y. And with the y, you can do a u substitution. Let u equal 4 minus y squared. And then the du is sitting right there. Um, with uh, the square root distributed to the 4, for that one, what you could do is uh, do the integral as an area interpretation. Instead of using y, maybe use a variable x. So you can switch out the dummy variable, as it's called, uh, y with um, x. 
And then you can consider the square root of four minus x squared to be the top half of the circle. And so the integral from negative two to two of that circle is really just gonna be the area under that circle, um, which is half of the area of a circle with radius two. So I'll leave that to you as an exercise, and if you have any questions about it, of course, feel free to, to let me know. I'm gonna write down distribute, then area interpretation, and for the other integral, substitution. Okay, thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.